Welcome to another video of online learning with me, Mam Jen. This video's topic is all about measurements. Are you familiar with these terms and images? Your cubit is a measurement from your elbow to the tip of your middle finger when your arm is extended. This measurement is used by the Egyptians to build the pyramids. The fathom, as seen in the picture, is a measure from your fingertip to fingertip when your arms are stretched sideways as far as they will go. You sometimes see a rope or fabric being measured in this manner. The last image shows you a hand span or the measure from the tip of your pinky to the tip of your thumb when your hand is stretched out. This is used to measure the height of the horses during the earlier times. Here are some more terms which I hope you are more familiar with. The foot is actually the measurement equal to the length of an individual's foot. This was standardized by King Henry I because his foot was 12 inches long. The second image shows you the girth or the measurement around one stomach or usually this refers to your belt measurement. Last, you have the palm which is actually the width of your four fingers when they are placed together. Now here are some traditional measurements we hear from our own folks. You might be familiar with some like dangkal and dipa which are actually used to measure your length or your distance. Sometimes you might hear some of your elders use the terms dakot, gatang, or kaban to refer to rice measurements. You may also hear kisap mata, saglit, or sandali used to refer to time. Now, this old system of measurement wherein we use our body parts is quite challenging for some. Let's first define measurement before you proceed to the modern systems we now use in measuring. Measurement is actually the assignment of a numerical value to an object's physical property. It also refers to the assignment of units to the numerical quantity to express the relative size or magnitude of the property. Let's say someone mentions that his shoe size is 10. Now, with just the number 10, do you know how to measure the size of the shoe? Of course not. There should be a unit of measure to quantify or to get the relative size of the shoe. By the 18th century, dozens of different units of measurement were commonly used throughout the world. The lack of common standards led to a lot of confusion in trade between countries. At the end of the century, the French government sought to solve this problem. In 1790, the French National Assembly commissioned the Academy of Science to design a simple decimal-based system of units. This system they devised is known as the metric system. Later on, in the 1960s, the metric system was officially named the System Internationale de Unites, or SI for short, and is now used in nearly every country in the world. The meter was originally calculated as one ten millionth of the distance from the North Pole to the equator through Paris, but it is now defined in terms of wavelength. Shown in blue are countries which use the metric or mainly the metric system, while shown in red are those who use the imperial or the British system. Now we only have three countries, namely the Myanmar, Liberia, and the United States, who follow the British or the English system of measurement. In 1999, there was an incident brought about by the confusion of the different systems of measurement. NASA lost a Mars orbiter costing $125 million because an engineering team used the English units of measurement while the agency's team used the more conventional metric system for a key spacecraft operation. This human error shows the importance 
of a unified system of measurement. Here are the different SI units used in science and mathematics. For length, we use meter. For mass, we use a kilogram. For time, we use seconds. For electric current, we use ampere. Thermodynamic temperature is measured using Kelvin. For the amount of substance, we use mole. And for luminous intensity, we have candela. SI derived units are units of measurement derived from the seven base units specified by the International System of Units. Examples of SI derived units are Hertz for frequency, Newton for force, Pascal for pressure, Joules for energy, and a lot more. These are common metric conversions you should be familiar with. For length, 1 meter is equivalent to 100 centimeters and 1 centimeter is equivalent to 10 millimeters. For distance, 1 kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. Weight, we have 1 kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. And you see other uh, metric conversions that we use daily. In metric system, we actually use prefixes to simplify the expression of the units. Here are the examples of the prefixes we used in a metric system. We have exa, peta, tera, giga, mega, kilo, and a lot more. You don't need to memorize the prefixes, but here are some mnemonics you may use to recall these prefixes. You may remember the great mighty King Hector died unexpectedly drinking chocolate milk Monday night pictures. I prefer using this shorter mnemonic because this uses the more commonly used prefixes. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. King represents kilometer. Henry represents hectometer. Died for the kilometer. By is for the base unit. Let's say we have meter for length, gram for weight, liter for volume, and others. For drinking, we have decimeter. Chocolate, you have your centimeter, and your milk for millimeter. As mentioned earlier, these are the seven fundamental SI units. So you have here the unit name and also the unit symbols. Another system of measurement is the English or Imperial system. Obviously, this system allowed for discrepancies between measurements obtained by different individuals. A standard was eventually set to ensure that all measurements represented the same amount for everyone. In the English or Imperial system, we use body parts or familiar objects to gain measurements. Examples, for getting shorter ground distances, it is measured with the human foot. For longer distances, it is measured by paces. For capacities or your volumes, these are measured with household items such as cups, pails or gallons, and baskets. We use conversion factors to change from English to metric and vice versa. Here are some of these factors which are readily available online. Here is a brief comparison of the two systems of measurement we have been discussing. For length, we use yard or inch for the English system, while we use meter or centimeter for the SI system. For mass, we use ounce or pound in English, while we use gram or kilogram for the SI system. For volume, we use quartz for the English, while we use liter for the SI system. For temperature, we usually use Fahrenheit in the English system, while Celsius and Kelvin is used in the SI system. And for time, they're both common, which we use is seconds. All measurement systems have standards, and standards are exact quantities that everyone agrees to use as a basis of comparison. Why use a metric system? Besides, it is a standard system of measure, 
In the SI system, you only have to remember one number. The SI system is based on the number 10. While in the English system, you have to remember so many numbers. Let's say you need to remember that for every foot, there are 12 inches. For every mile, there is 5,280 feet. For every yard, there is 3 feet. And for every pound, there is 16 ounces. You could also easily go around conversions in a metric system because these are merely a matter of moving a decimal point. The base unit means that you have a quantity like grams, meters, or liters without a prefix. If you want to get a bigger unit to a smaller unit, you simply multiply or you move your decimal place to the right. Well, if you want a smaller unit to a bigger unit, you divide the value by 10 and or you move your decimal point to the left. Let's try some examples. Let's convert 18 liters to milliliters. So we start at the center or at our base unit, which is 18 liters, and then we move three decimal places to arrive at milliliters. So 18 liters is equivalent to 18,000 milliliters. Now let's have another example. Let's convert 450 milligrams to grams. So we now start with your milligrams, and now we move one, two, three, three decimal places to arrive at our base unit or to grams. So for 450 milligrams, we have 0.45 grams. Now test yourself with the sample units. Pause the video and answer them on your own. Measurement is the action of measuring something or the amount of something. It is important to measure certain things right because by taking these measurements, we can better understand the world around us. I hope you learned something from today's video. Thanks for watching. Bye!